Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the big show. I am your host, Jerk, and it's the freaking weekend, so let's have us some fun. Not only is it the weekend, but we are also entering a very special time of year, a time of year I call the season, and that is trademark, so suck it, Facebook. What is the season? Well, it is an occurrence I first discovered in college. I noticed that at a certain time of year, an average Joe like myself was able to, what's a family-friendly term, climb the social ladder romantically. It seems the holidays and chilly weather turned my outward appearance from a 6 to a 10. And let me tell you, armed with my major in poetry and my minor in philosophy, you know, just in case the whole poetry thing fell through, well, it truly becomes a magical time of year. Halloween starts the preseason action with the official season starting the weekend before Thanksgiving with the playoffs beginning on Valentine's Day. So get out there, players, and play. Which brings us to today's guest. As the season takes hold of me spiritually, I can't help but look back on past loves and wonder. Wonder if I shouldn't give them a second chance. So let's bring him out here, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for my longtime love, the Tech Tree Tier 7 Russian Battleship. Give it up for Vladivostok. Vladivostok, she looks just as good as she did the last time I saw her, all dressed in black and gothy. I hate to see her go, but I love watching her leave. Enough with the lechery, jerk. She's moved on, and have you seen her new guy? It's Kedrov, getting polyamorous with Andrew Stunningham and Shelly Johnson, serving up some damn fine coffee and delicious cherry pie. Long-time viewers know that the Vladivostok is my most played ship in the game, making up a whopping 3.8% of my games played. Yeah, I play everything because variety is the spice of life as I am learning working through my ground pepper variety pack and working through multiple seasons. <clears throat> you know what, let's let's just get into this game before I have to mark this video as Peggy18. If you've seen any of my other Vladivostok videos, you'll know I tend to play it like Gandalf versus a Balrog. You find a hole, you stick your nose in there. Is this going to pass the sensors? And announce, you shall not pass. And once you clean that area out, you move on to the next and rinse and repeat. And none of that is going to happen in this match. Instead, everything is going to happen within the square of the map I am in right now. (laughs) And just reading and reacting to what's happening on the mini-map. So we plugged up the b-hole and forced that Bismarck into a crossfire with our C side, whereas the red team chose to overload A. And while they are pushing through with relative ease because of that, what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? Because I didn't give up the center of the map, the red team is about to find out. But before we can enchante ourselves to the folks at A, of which I am checking their health status real quick while they're spotted, we've got to deal with the Bismarck first. And I appreciate what our hipper is trying to do here, pushing into B, and I assume wanting to torp rush the Bismarck, but they have to recognize that they are going to be in a crossfire by the team on A. So, nice effort. Probably not the right execution. But because the Bismarck was in retreat from us in the center area, they are left wide open to that crossfire from C. Are you all tired of hearing me talk about crossfires yet? Well, if you'd all help set them up, I wouldn't have to talk about them so often. (laughs) But we should see the results coming in at any moment on this Bismarck from C. Oh, yep. That's why we do it, and now I will be able to yoink this Bismarck. I mean, I did damage on them first with that Citadel, so technically I called this ship, right? That's how it works. Let's see if the... Oh, never mind. Somebody else is going to get it, and you guys know I'm a okay with that. So, with the red team now bifurcated entirely, you know I'm going to use that word anytime I can. 
we can turn our attention to the Red Menace at A, which is a full health Iowa, an Odin, a Piotr Bagration, and the Weimar, I believe. And while we get into position to deal with this, first thing I want to talk about is uh, my shot selection. I'm looking at where my teammates are around me. Because you'll see that while we back up here and get turned, initially I am looking at that Iowa, but at the last second, I'm going to switch to the Odin. And why would I do that? Well, it is not to yoink it. It is to get guns off the map. I don't know if uh, that Odin has any more heals or if somebody's going to be entering will to rebuild range with them. But what I do know is that they are presenting a good angle for me to belit them. Right here we switch. And... Belited. <laughs> so we get our first ship sunk, and now we can talk about the second subject I wanted to cover. And uh, you may want to skip this because this is going to get a little nerdy. But because I have been hearing a lot of jibber-jabber out there recently that there is an overpenetration bug or that someone's win rate is somehow calculated into their RNG, uh, let me spin you a yarn that may provide a different point of view. It is a yarn of penetration. No, we aren't going to the glory days of college. We're talking about shell velocity. You see, velocity matters, and in Wowzles, our engagement range is much closer than on PC. On PC, you'll see battleships shooting each other at like 20 kilometers away frequently, and you'll hear many on PC lament that brawling is not viable, but here in Wowzles, brawling is still very much alive, and our engagement ranges are much closer. And what that means is our shells are generally hitting their targets at a much higher velocity than they do on PC. And with our fuse timers, for the most part, all being three hundredths of a second, well, when these shells are traveling at 800 meters a second or more, then that means they will travel at least 24 meters before they even arm. Now, in PC land, your shells have traveled so far that drag has lowered their velocity significantly, and as such, you see less over penetrations. Does that mean there can't be a bug? Nope. And without training rooms, it is impossible to test, but you won't get training rooms. You're going to get more aircraft carriers. <laughs> but you best believe that the data collected would indicate that. So I will propose something else. Could it be, now just go with me here for a second, but it, could it be that the game mechanics are just a little more complicated than most people understand? You know, the Dunning-Kruger effect. Can anyone here tell me what the minimum arming threshold calculation is for this game? Uh, it's something like the size of your shell divided by 14.3. That's the amount of armor thickness your shell has to hit before it even starts the fuse timer. But how many players even know in this game that that is a game mechanic? I'd be willing to bet less than 10%. Maybe less than 10 people. And as such, you get the echo chamber spouting conspiracies. Don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean I don't think that battleship players don't have a case to make about their efficacy. But the solution to that is probably adjusting battleship accuracy and fuse timing, in my humble opinion. All right, who wants to see all of this in action? Well, pay attention. This shot, let's see. This shot, five over penetrations, and that is because of where my shells hit the Pyotr Bagration. It only has 25 millimeters of armor, and so if we do our math right of 406 divided by 14.3, we get the result of 28.4 millimeters required to even arm these shells. So now we will skillfully maneuver our ship around these sea turds, and we'll see what happens when they hit much thicker armor like this belt. Bonk. Okay, it's safe for you guys to come back in here and you can remove your pocket protectors now. And I will leave you with the choice of calculators or aluminum foil hats. And through all of that, we are at four ships sunk with just a Weimar and an Azuma left. And just as promised, I have stayed within one square on the minimap this entire game. 
No doubt this Weimar player has seen the reviews and knows that it can destroy anything, which it can, so long as the opponent contains a fair amount of starch, but the only starch on me is in my shirt collar. So since I am spotted, I'm going to reverse here with the expectations of them shooting some of those torps at me. And not long ago, I had a comment asking why I use prop mods on my battleships so much, and I said I find that for me, I often have to juke torpedo shots, and that's the biggest part to that for me, is starting and stopping, and there are the torpedoes that we are fully expecting. Now, speaking of full expectations, I have full expectations of sinking every last ship in this match, starting with that Azuma. But I am still positioning myself to be able to shoot at this Azuma and have space available to accelerate away from the Weimar and its torps should they be timing their torp rush to my shots, which is what they should do. I mean, if they can sink one more ship in this match, then they will win this game. So I have to be a little bit cognizant of that. I mean, I know that the Weimar is still within 5.5 kilometers of me right now. So I'm just playing it safe. I'm going to go ahead and pop the spotter plane and we will see that extra 10% accuracy come into play with two overpins. <laughs> I mean, who knows where I actually hit that ship? Uh, you know, it's, at, at that range, Vladivostok is not uh, particularly accurate, as I would say. It, some people would say, well, that's why you should use Goller, but I don't know. I just don't have Gala ranked up high enough, and I've always intended to have Kedrov for when the Kremlin someday will make it into Legendary tier. Uh, let's get one more off there. Uh, surely, surely this will sink the Azuma, right? And my teammates are asking me to sink it. Uh, no, we get a penetration and a bounce. All right. Well, it looks like they are turning in, so I am aiming accordingly and let Stalin's hand guide these shells and uh, deliver us crack in 327 in the Vladivostok. And now there is just one last ship to deal with. And what are they going to do? Are they going to sit behind an island and just wait out the clock? Or will they go out and get shot by my teammates? Or... Will they back up to a location where I can delete them and pick up a six pack, which is a great way to start the weekend. And ching backwards. And oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, let's see the scoreboard. 2,842 XP for a good game. If I'd ever been able to get on B and cap it, we'd be north of 3K for a very good game, but no luck this time. Anyway, looking over these scores, I'd say it was a pretty GG for both teams, not a blowout for once, and that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you used the math portion of this video to put yourself or a child to sleep, go ahead and hit like, or if you are aware that I'm just a mouthpiece used for hiding the truth, hit dislike, questions, comments, the crow flies at midnight, leave it down below, and if you are interested in succumbing to the propaganda machine, touch subscribe. Thanks for watching, folks. I will get back out there for another one soon, and we'll talk then.